video I wanted to talk about rifle to pistol transition. So basically I want to start out with why. Why would you be doing a rifle to pistol transition? Now this is more you're doing it while in a fight, as it were. Um, not administrative like, hey, we're going from rifle to Tears of the Sun suppressor mode or whatever. We're talking about, you know, you're in a gunfight, bang, 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 and then you gotta pull out your sidearm and you're down to using that. So, why would we go from the hot chick to her ugly cousin? Well, there's a few reasons, obvious reasons. Number one, you're out of ammunition or you have a malfunction. Now, there's different techniques to all this, like when to do it and stuff like that, ingraining that muscle memory, as it were, ingraining that habit of knowing when and where. Uh, another consideration I don't hear many people talking about is CQB, close contact. So, you go in, you're struggling with somebody, and you're pinned up with your rifle. You basically, brace your rifle and fight with them one-handed while engaging with the pistol. That could be a transition, although that's a little bit of an odd one. It's a bit of a different principle, but that's still, I guess, you're transitioning to a pistol. So, you know, there's other things you can do in CQB other than just trans <laughs> uh, transitioning to a pistol. But anyways, um, those are some of the reasons why. You know, there's a lot of other reasons a lot of people have for doing it, but, you know, that's just a short list, and I think those are the most important. Now, I'm going to go over the basic method of it. Now, I'm going to do individual videos on how to use a bullpup, how to use, you know, an AR or something longer like my PTR-91, the G3, basically, and a shotgun. So, there will be a little method videos on that, and I'm going to be covering standing, kneeling, and prone in those. So... These are just lessons I've learned. I'm not like teaching anybody anything, but basically, let's go over the basic method and idea behind doing a transition. So, first off, you're doing a transition because you have to keep up that rate of fire, right? So, Charlie's, Charlie's, uh, you know, in the wire, as it were, as my old uh, gunnery sergeant used to say, Charlie's in the wire. So, basically, Charlie's in the wire, you identify it, and then, boom, and you go to the pistol. And you're out of ammunition, you felt it, so you couldn't do a reload in time, but you felt that you were out, so you had that issue. So, there we go. <clears throat> so, now we're up again. So, this time, I'll go ahead and charge my pistol and I'll actually shoot at the steel over here. Just wanted to do that dry for a second. So get some rifle rounds through anyways. But anyways the basic principle is to not really slow down your rate of fire. You might not be able to feel it but it might be on your second trigger squeeze if you're not very familiar with the rifle or if you're wearing a lot of gear you might not feel it. However I do actually notice with all rifles there is a sound. Of, it's almost like a, like a double uh, boom, boom. It's like a two-part sound when a gun fires and it cycles uh, all the way, going back and forward again. So, with this I can feel that it's only half of that full noise, at least in my head. And it's probably reverberation coming off the uh, gun itself when the, si when the action hits inside and you get that reverberation. So, maybe that's the other half that you're missing, but I can sense that even with a lot of gear on. So, anyways... You're sensing Charlie, you're sensing Charlie's room. Okay. Alright, I missed on that second shot. So, anyways. So, with that I didn't really go too fast, but the principles that you want to keep in mind here are staying accurate, uh, getting fluid with your method, and making sure that it can be consistent. And this is something that you need to practice in a lot of different positions and you need to be versatile with it. So, like I was saying, standing, kneeling, prone in my technique videos, this is something that I don't work on very much because I'm not an operator, but it is something that's fun for us who like to play video games and, uh, you know, we wish that we did more adventurous stuff that we could tell stories about at the bar, you know? So, anyways, again, go up.
basically a minor halt in the basically the the fire if as it were so there's a slight halt in the fire and then you keep it going so there we go I'm getting good at these little tactical reloads for the sire so that's a whole nother game but a whole nother video but anyways I'll just do this some more the biggest thing being accurate with the pistol so there we go and try to fire several shots if you can don't just do the one shot and you know call it good unless you're unless you're not that great on ammo which uh, looks like oh I got a round in there though but it didn't you know lock in snow covered aug mag it's nice to shove in your pocket so anyways just keep going there I like recording my mess ups I'm human I mess up so as you probably saw there my gun actually snagged on the magazine so there again it goes into the technique that you're using for these weapon systems so make sure you're actually securing your magazines for one all right so and make sure the guns off to the side and one thing I like to do is I'll just go a little slower here as I as I'm out I find that this hand is useless because click click I checked and as this hand is busy moving the rifle this one's down and ready to re-engage so basically ugh, shoving a rifle and a pistol magazine in your pocket doesn't exactly help things so there we go all right so let's keep playing these games so this should be a pretty entertaining video for everybody out here wanting to watch me screw up a bunch all right let's see how much i can screw up i can screw up a lot And I don't even have to look at the gun to do these reloads. If you have to look at your gun to do your reloads, you're not that awesome. You'll look like a joke. Just saying. My personal opinion, if you don't know your gun enough to be able to do things in the dark, then don't act like you're some hot shot. Just saying. If you have to look at your pistol to do a reload, you're not a hot shot. You need to work more with your gun. This should be instinctive, like, like a second thing. Like second nature. USP-40 is very pleasurable to shoot. So, I think I'll just go ahead and dump this one. So, shoot at that snow ledge. sure everybody in the neighborhood was still asleep because this is nice early morning here in Alaska and it is like 10 o'clock yeah 10 30 so we're only gonna get like a few hours a day of sunlight but you know gotta have your fun while you can out here and then the rest of the time low light shooting is what you can practice hence why I have my light on here so I'm gonna be doing some more videos on that anyways so I need to do some demos so anyways uh, tell me what you think in the comments below it's not exactly a fine science as far as uh, well it's kind of like a fine science and how you do things your technique and the combination of things situation dictating it's, it can be very muddy with all the different methods if you have a sling if you don't have a sling if it's just a battlefield pickup or whatever and you have to transition to a pistol obviously this whole situation is based on a bad day right so how many times do you know of people that have actually had to do this and it was it wasn't something like huh I haven't shot my pistol in a year and they were just <laughs> shooting I, I know of a few people that did that apparently rumor has it but I do believe it but anyways uh, thanks a lot for watching leave some comments below and hope you enjoyed the video